Elon Musk is the billionaire CEO of SpaceX and Tesla and was ranked by Forbes magazine as number 21 on their list of the world's most powerful people. He went from being raised by his abusive father in the suburbs of South Africa to now being the 20th richest person in the world with a net worth of $27.9 billion. And today we're going to learn his best advice on why you must be persistent. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I give you a shot of espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning. I believe in you, and let's do this. Elon Musk, tell us how to be persistent. You know, when I started the first uh, internet company, Zip2, um, uh, with my brother and, a, and another person, um, yeah, Greg Curry, the, uh, it wasn't really with the thought of being wealthy. It, it, you know, I've got nothing against being wealthy, but... <laughs> um, the, we'll get back the, to that later, too. <laughs> but but it's just, it, it was just from the standpoint of wanting to be part of the, the internet. And uh, I, I, I figured if we could make enough money to just get by, it would be, that would be okay. Um, and when we, when we started off... Uh, we, we, we literally only had like one computer, and so it would be our web server during the day, and I'd code at night. Um, and we, we just got a, a, a small office um, uh, in, in Palo Alto back when rent was not insane. Um, and uh, it, it cost us like $450 a month. It was cheaper than an apartment, so we actually just slept in the office and then, sh and then shower at the YMCA at Page Mill El Camino. So we'd walk over there and, and, and shower. And, uh, and that was um, actually, I think uh, that was when I f we first I first met you, by the way. Sure. Um, and uh, so I don't know if how many people, no, probably not many people know this, but uh, uh, we actually pitched uh, Steve in like January '96 on uh, the, the Zip2 business plan. Uh, and actually, I thought um, Steve was actually one of the most up to speed on. On, on what actually was in our business plan. Most most of the people we met did not actually read our business plan. Um, in fact, a lot of people, we, a lot of venture capitalists we met at the time, didn't even know what the internet was. Or, or they've never used. They've never used I'm it. Not sure. They didn't think I'm not it sure if we to still do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm talking like you know, sort of well-known people on Sand Hill. I was like, wow, okay. Um, but but at the time, nobody had made any any money on the internet. So I guess uh, that's. Um, you know, it, then it wasn't really clear evidence that, that there was, was a business. If you've got a big dream, people are always going to tell you that you are nuts. Some of them won't believe in you because they love you and they're afraid for you. Others are going to put you down because they hate their own lives and now nobody around them can have success at all. But if you want to win, if you want to take that crazy idea and make it happen, you're going to have to believe in yourself when nobody else does until it happens for you. I look at my story and everything that's happened for me on YouTube and in my business and career and a lot of it has just been patience and persistence. It's been showing up every day, making content, grinding it out and slowly by slowly by slowly you start getting some wins. I look at even starting on YouTube, guys, 11 years ago, my first video, YouTube was not an educational platform. You can go back and watch that first video. It's still there. It's me uh, talking about Walt Disney's story. Go check it out. Um, it's embarrassing. I feel super awkward looking at that backwards, but nobody was making content that was more than five minutes. Nobody was making educational content. Nobody was making videos where you can learn something. YouTube was a totally different platform at the time, just basically filled with memes. And so here I was making this content just because I thought it might help. Maybe it was a little bit stupid, to be honest. Maybe I should have been somewhere else, but I'm a visual learner and I wanted to be on a visual platform and YouTube seemed to be the only place to host video content at the time. Eventually, YouTube kind of cut up. Not that I was visionary or some pioneer or leader, not with intention at least, but YouTube became a place where you could go to learn things. A lot of people, the first place they go to now is YouTube. They go, how do I learn how to X, Y, Z? YouTube for a lot of people is the number one place that they go to. It's a fantastic place for educational content now, but it wasn't 11 years ago when I started. And so it's just because I stuck around because I believed in it. I thought it was helpful. Maybe not for the planet, the world, but it's helpful for a couple of people who are watching a piece of the video I was making and sending in comments. I think about the relationships I've built with people 
over time. I think about, you know, Tony Robbins was the first person we did a profile on that he then featured it on his own YouTube channel as well and linked to it. And then we tried to line up an interview for him to be on my channel. And he said, yes. Uh, and then last minute he had something else happen and he had to cancel it. So I said, no problem. Let's, let's figure out another time to make it happen. Tony, welcome aboard, man. Thanks, Evan. Great to be with you. And it took two years. It took two years to make it happen. I didn't even realize it took that long. When I look at my first email sequence with them that set up the meeting to then when I actually had it happen was two years in between. And what am I doing in those two years? I'm still making videos. I'm still profiling Tony. I'm still reaching out to his team. I'm still providing value to them and pushing them and helping them with their YouTube presence. Always, constantly, consistently for two years. And then the Tony Robbins interview happens. And that's led to other opportunities and more people want to have me come on and speak on their stage and make videos on them and help them with their YouTube channel. And everything has started to spiral up, but it's because of just staying patient and staying consistent. And I still have the mentality of when I started my channel, nobody commented on my videos, right? My mom was my first comment. My older sister was my second comment. And then some random dude was my third comment. And, and in a year, that first video only had those three comments. I appreciate you guys for watching. I appreciate everybody that, that comes and consumes the content. And I still relate more to that startup creator, startup entrepreneur more than having had all the success. But what makes me different it's not that I'm more talented than people. I remember being sad when I passed Eric Thomas on YouTube and Tony Robbins on YouTube when my channel was bigger than theirs because I feel like they had a lot more talent than me. And it's it's part of my mission to try to get, get people who have a strong voice to share more content, to get it up there. Because I think if I have you know, 2 million subscribers on my main channel, then Tony Robbins should have, should have 20, should have 200 million. Like it, it should be a much crazier number. And so I was sad when I passed some of them on YouTube. Why, how? It's because I made 6,000 plus videos. It's because every day I'm making videos. I can't remember the last day we didn't post a single video. We're posting now, I don't know, four or five videos a day across our channels, maybe more, six. I'm trying to think now, we've got 12 channels. It's just crazy number of content. And now I've got a team and they help me. And yes, that's super valuable, but I make videos when I'm sick. Today's my birthday. I'm recording this on May 20th. That's my birthday. I just turned 40 years old uh, and people are saying, hey, what are you taking a day off? No, I'm making videos. This is, this is what I love doing. I broke my neck. I'm making videos. On my birthday, I'm breaking videos. I, breaking videos? Making videos. <laughs> I lose my voice. I'm sick. I'm still making videos. I remember I've lost uh, my voice. I couldn't talk at all. And so I would hold up signs and have the words on the sign for you guys to read. And we still made videos. The videos have to go up. And so I think if you just study my journey, it's one much more of just persistency and following through and not giving up and continuing to, to make and to produce and to create, even though most things don't work. And even though I didn't have the natural talent, I'm introverted, I'm shy, I'm awkward. Um, it's taken a lot of practice just to get to this point. And it can be super frustrating to see other people just get in front of the camera and crush it. Who are who are you at your level or even ahead? And it's like, how many videos you made? I don't know, five. Five, are you kidding me? <laughs> right? But you play the hands that you are dealt. You may not could be able to control whether you're naturally introverted or extroverted or have the circumstances growing up, right? You can't control that, but you can always control your effort. You can always control how persistent you are. You can always control how you show up every single day. And where are the moments that you let yourself down, that you let yourself off the hook, that you let yourself not make, not post, not follow through? How often is it? I'm making videos on my birthday, not because of some streak or some commitment, but because this is what I want to do, guys. This is what fills me up. And when you find a thing that makes you fill up, that you know is providing value and service, even in a small way right now, having the persistence to stay on it when everyone thinks you're nuts, having the belief in yourself to stay on it when everybody thinks you're crazy. That's what makes the difference between the people who you look up to as heroes and the people who you've never heard of because they quit and they fell back to a life that was less than what they could have been. Now I've got a three-step process that you can use to stay persistent when the doubt is creeping into your mind but before that, if you want to have unstoppable confidence and learn from billionaires, check out my 254 series where every day for 254 days, I will help you build the habit of confidence for free 
The links to join are in the description below. There are just times when something is important enough, that you believe in it enough that you, you do it in spite of the fear. If you have a great product, lots of people will buy it. <laughs> and then the company will be successful. That, that ended up being worse than if we had designed a car from, from the beginning. Okay, my three-step process to stay persistent, to stay consistent, to have the belief in yourself when everyone thinks you're crazy, here we go. Step number one is use the nose as fuel. And I add this in not because I use it, but because I know it works for a lot of other people. And, and I'm channeling Tom Bilyeu right now. This is one of the things that Tom does That's he credits to having his success. If you know Tom, Impact Theory, built a billion dollar business with, with Quest and now has his awesome YouTube channel. He has a list. He has a list of all the people who doubted him, who didn't believe in him. And whenever he feels like he really needs that extra motivation, he goes to that dark place and looks at that list and say, all these people did not believe in me. I'm going to show them wrong. I don't do that. I don't get a lot of power and strength for myself of being in the dark side of proving somebody wrong. But I think it can be very beneficial for people and a lot of people do talk about it. So I wanted to at least give that to you as an option. Use those no's as fuel. Use that, your mom telling you that you suck and you can't make it. Maybe she doesn't say that you suck, but that you can't make it. Using your friends or haters online saying that you're never gonna do it. Using that as fuel to say, I'm gonna show you and prove you wrong. I just think the danger is if you live in there for too long, if you're only fueled for the dark side, it consumes you. If you're only doing something to prove somebody wrong, you're never going to stay consistent, persistent enough because it's not a good enough reason. At the core of doing the thing has to be you love doing the thing. You want to serve, right? You're built to serve. You want to serve. You want to help. You want to help, right? Um, but if you have to channel the dark side every now and then, use those noses as fuel to help you get forward, then go for it and give it a shot. Step number two is remember your why. And this is what I lean on a lot more. I remember why I do what I do. I remember the 19-year-old Evan who was struggling, who couldn't pay anything, who felt worthless, incompetent, hopeless, embarrassed, ashamed, showing up every day, working his face off and not getting any results and just feeling like a total loser. That's what I remember. That's what I channel. That's my why. Cause there's a lot of people who are like that right now. They're struggling, who are good people, who have a big mission, who have a big heart, who want to serve and help and, and they're struggling and they don't know how to do it and nobody believes in them. And so I want to be that guy. I want to, I want to try to help and, and maybe a video like this hits five people and it touches them in a meaningful way and maybe it hits five million. But knowing that at least it's helping somebody, remembering who I used to be and knowing that there's so many people who are like that and I'm trying, I'm punching, I'm grinding every day to try to reach more of those people in different ways, that fuels me to keep going. Much more than going to the dark side, at least for me, remembering your why and who you used to be and knowing that you are built to serve and have to chase it down with every ounce of your being. And step number three is focus on progress. When you focus on progress instead of the end result, that's where I think you can keep your motivation and keep your belief. When I first started making my videos, I wasn't getting any results, right? Nobody was watching, nobody was commenting. I felt like a loser, right? Like, nobody cares, it's not happening, I'm not getting the results. Understand that you very rarely ever get results at the beginning. If you focus on just getting the results at the beginning, you're likely gonna get too discouraged and quit. It's not that the results aren't important, it's just people have a too short an attention span and when you focus on the results at the beginning, it is too discouraging and you do give up. Instead, you focus on the progress. Are you getting better? Are you learning? Was your video better than last time? Did you show up with more energy than last time? Did you have better points than you did last time? Was that sales call you did better than the, the one last time? Was your next test better than it was yesterday, right? Are you getting better? Because if you can say, I'm getting better. If, you, if you're making videos and you look back a week later, a month later and say, man, I'm, I still suck, but I'm better than I was a week ago, a month ago, and you can focus on the progress, at least for me, it really helps fuel my motivation, my belief in myself that, hey, if I made that growth from here to here, then I can make more growth from here to here. And at the beginning, here's the thing, at the beginning, the growth is pretty fast. When you're learning something from, from scratch at the beginning, you actually learn very quickly. It's at the end that it gets harder. For me right now to keep getting better, is harder. I don't see as big a return on my on my progress as Evan Carmichael growth from last week to this week, from last month to this month. How much better am I on camera from last month to this month? Not that much. 
it, it requires even more effort and even more mentorship and even more practice and training to get better as when you're close to the top. At the beginning, you can learn really quickly and there's a lot of progress. The flip side for me now is there's lots of results, right? When you start actually getting good, that's when the results kick in. So then you can start focusing on the results. Say, hey, is this working or not? Is this video doing better than the last one or not? Because you start getting some data and results to work with. So at the beginning, you're focusing on the progress. Am I getting better? Am I improving? And am I learning? Is it better than I, than I was last week? And then as that starts to taper off, you might get frustrated with your progress, but good news, you're gonna start seeing results come in and that'll keep you motivated to keep going as well. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that question of the day, I wanna know, what are you proud of your growth from the past month? Think about who you were a year, uh, a month ago and where you are now, and what's the thing that you are the most proud of for how you've grown over that month? Let me know, put it in the comments below. And if you made it this far in a video, you're still here watching and you promise, you commit that you're gonna do something about it. We take action here in Believe Nation. You're promising to take action in your life today based off of what you learned here in this video. I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. I moved in, one of my buddies from Indiana said, you gotta come to Dallas. And I'm like, I'm there. You know, my car would only get so far. It had a Fiat X19 with a hole in the floorboard that guzzled oil every 60 miles. And I went down there and there's a place called The Village. It's the world's, was the world's largest apartment complex. We had six guys in a three bedroom apartment. I didn't have my own room. I didn't have my own drawer. I didn't have my closet. I had a pile and I had one ratty towel that I stole from um, Motel 6. Um, and that was it. And so I was looking for my career, got a job at a software store. And I was, you know, I was, didn't have a tech background, so I was teaching myself all this. Because the way I look at tech is somebody invents it, and everybody else is tied for second place in the ability to learn it. And if, if I work harder and faster to really dive in, even if it means reading the manual, you know, just d diving in, then I can get a head start. How and old I can were have, you during this? I was this? 24. And so sleeping on the floor, working in a software company, you know, learning, 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 getting better at what I was doing. And then one day, because I was dying to get out of that rat hole that I lived in, um, I had a chance to go out and close the sale for that would have got me a $1,500 commission. And so I went to my boss, his name is Michael Humecki, and I said, boss, one of my uh, responsibilities was to sweep the floor, wipe down the windows, and open the door to open the store. I got the sale, you gotta let me close the sale. He goes, no, you gotta be in there to open the store. And I'm like, Michael, you, I mean, no. So I made the executive decision to go out, pick up the check, thinking if I hand this guy a $15,000 check, of course he's gonna change his mind. <laughs> Fired me on the spot. And so here I was living in a, excuse my French, you know, just this ratty place with a Motel 6 towel, sorry, Motel 6, um, <laughs> and, and really didn't know how I was going to get out. But I went to, I decided, okay, I'm a lousy employee. I went to um, one of the companies that I've been talking to, Architectural Lighting, and I said, look, um, I need $500 to be able to buy the software you want, and I promise you that even if it doesn't work, I will wash your car, you know, I will walk your dog, I don't care what it is, I will do whatever it takes to make it up to you. And they gave me the $500 and that allowed me to create micro solutions. And you know, six months later, I was out of the rat hole and my company turned into a real company and that's the one I sold um, for $6 million when I was 29, 30 years old. And if you wanna know how Elon Musk asks better questions that you can learn from, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Very often the, the issue is understanding what questions to ask. And if you can properly frame the question, then the answer is the easy part.